Hi, right, I've done this video because I promised and promised and promised to do this video for a long time because so many people get confused about using a generator with our inverter. So what we've got here, we've set something up. Um, in fact, I've got a couple of power supplies charging the battery. We use a very small battery because we need to demonstrate it, otherwise it will take forever. We're using an AC power source. This is actually replacing the generator. So it's quite a complicated power source, but it can, it's a variable frequency, variable voltage, variable everything power source, so we can explain how the generator functions. Um, we've got a, a couple of things. This is our load, so this is our essential load. It's a couple of lamps. So the whole thing is in small scale. Um, we've had to do this. This indicator here, this little LED array, is indicating that we've got a gen signal. So if you notice, the gen signal is connected on here on this inverter into pins 7 and 8. Um, so this is an on an 8 kilowatt inverter, don't run 7 and 8. And this will indicate when we need, when, when the system will call for generator. So the system now is running off a small battery. We've been just charging the battery off the power supply, so we can turn it off the power supply. We don't need that now. Um, and so now it is in discharge mode. Um, this is the only means, this power supply is now is the only means that will charge the battery, which is actually emulating a generator. So we're currently, look at our settings here, and we're going to auxiliary load. So we've got two sets of settings here. We're saying generator off 54.6, generator on 48 volts. The generator on voltage is very important. However, there is something else. There's a couple of other things to be aware of battery charge current we've limited it for this for this um, experiment we've just limited it to a couple of amps so it's very low okay so we've, we've done that the next thing is on the system mode I've set the system mode at 50 volts that means the off using the system the timer that means the off voltage is 50 so don't mix up because on here if I go on the auxiliary it's shown off voltage of 54 using the controller will override that voltage so let's see how it works. Okay, we've now set we've set the, we've set the uh, I've gone to the we've set the generator to come on at 48 volts. Um, I'm now discharging. If I look at the battery here, so I'm doing everything in voltage because it's easy. I'm only using a very small volt battery. So the battery now is at 49 volts. Let's just increase the load a little bit, and we'll put the load up because we'll flatten the battery a little bit quicker. And you see here the battery is dropping 49.26, 48.92. 48, 48.87, 48.86, and there we go. There we go, it's actually called the generator on. I'm gonna reduce the load a little bit because the power supply's called the generator. Look what's happening now. Generator is switched on. It's supplying current. We've only limited to, everything is in small scale. So we're just limiting it to one amp. Our frequency of the generator is running at 49.6. Uh, Our voltage here, the so this generator now is supplying the load and charging the battery. So we can see here, we're charging the battery at 50 watts. So there's 50 watts going into the battery. Look at the voltage rise. I've set the cap voltage at 50 on the system, 49.9. And hopefully when we get to 50 volts, right there we go, just onto 50 volts, it's cut. So it's no longer using the generator, it's back on the battery. That's because of the system, the system mode here is capped at 50. If I cap that at 51, 52, 53, the cutoff. So I've got a fairly tight hysteresis there and you can see how it's, how, it's, how it's operating. And it operates very simple. Now, a couple of other things. Let's, let's just load up the battery again and let's, let's get the battery back down again to a lower voltage. Um, now, it's a tight hysteresis because of the way we're operating it. 48, you see the voltage dropping dropping and it's dropping a little bit more and as it drops we're going to go on to i'm going to increase the load a little bit here right okay now it's called it's calling for the power supply power supply now is supplying the power supply is the generator it's supplying if i take this out of frequency this is my frequency control if i drop my frequency varying it it's okay for a little bit but if my frequency goes too far out i'm taking my 50 hertz 54 hertz. there you go 55 hertz gone it's gone it's dropped the generator out because the frequency. Sometimes generators can go up and down the frequency. That's a very important. You can see very clearly on that, let's bring the frequency back in and we bring it back onto a nice 50 Hertz. Um, it's got enough voltage at the moment, even though it's dropped out, the voltage has risen above the voltage that it requires a generator to call. So it won't bring the generator back on again. Um, if because the voltage is, for, we have the generator set to come in at 48 volts, and now our voltage at 49, so the generator won't come on. 
um, that's another important fact. Once the generator is cut out, if it's in between the hysteresis points, it won't come back on again. Um, I'm trying to explain basically, it's a very simple thing to, to use, but the most important thing about the generator is there are several things to bear in mind. One, obviously, is your battery. And, and of course, if you're using a lithium battery, please make sure the battery system is communicating. If you haven't got communication, the whole thing is out of, out, out of kilter. What I'm doing on this demonstration, I'm using voltage purely for showing it. This could be state of charge on a big lithium battery. We could be using a large lithium battery. Um, the test would take hours and hours and hours. So I'm just trying to speed things up and show a very quick demonstration on how the unit controls the generator. And it works beautifully. It works absolutely beautifully. Now, if I go on here, we, we can see uh, our voltage now. It's at 49 volts. Um, we're, not, we're drawing very little power. It's pulling from the battery. Um, so it will drop slowly, slowly. If you increase the load again, increase the load again. We'll just demonstrate it again. We increase the load and you'll see the battery dropping down. And as it gets to the close to the 48 volt switch on, then it will click and you'll see it will call for the generator. There you go, it's called for the generator. Now, if I, let me just, ex, let me just come out of it a second. It's calling for the generator. Generator is now switched on. Generator is supplying the load and, and charging the battery at the same time. I've limited the charge current to the battery is very low. So you see it's only 50 watts, um, one amp, which is 50 watts. So it is low uh, purely because the power supply that I'm using to emulate a generator is not particularly very powerful. Um, but the thing works. Now it's actually running fine. It's that ch chugging, this could be a generator chugging away and it works, it really works well. The other thing is, it's one of the things I keep going on about is system mode. I am using the controller. The controller here is capping the voltage at 50 volt. That's the off voltage. If I increase, if I don't use the timer, so untick use the timer, and now I go onto auxiliary load, this one comes into play, which is the 54 volt cutoff and 48. So now, if I actually, if I set here, say the voltage here, say, uh, 49 okay it's come on 49 this will not switch off now until the battery reaches much higher voltage because i'm no longer using the timer the timer overrides the auxiliary generator off because you can't adjust that you'll probably discover i can't adjust it you adjust it from the time of use the timer uh, or the controller and now it's calling for it and you just hit the click bump it's on now the voltage now will have to reach much higher voltage because I've, di I've disabled the timer, and so it will be the voltage to reach would be the voltage that's shown on the auxiliary, which is 54.6. Um, you'll find you can't adjust that, uh, and you can't. We know that. It's not meant to be adjusted because basically that that's denotes from the upper voltage on your battery setting, what, which is actually denotes to the battery being 95% full. However, if you go onto the system mode here and you use the timer, this will override it. Every time will override it. So I hope I tried to explain it, but this system works magic. It's magic with a generator. It does work, it's simple, simple. Make sure you've got the right connections. Make sure your batteries are communicating if you're using lithium ion. Always check, you know, we get people calling us and had nightmares of installations. It goes on and on and on, and they got a problem. They suddenly discover the CAN bus is not communicating or whatever. Um, and you can see the generator now is chugging away. The voltage is 49.94. The generator will not switch off now. Because I'm no longer using the timer, the generator will not switch off until it reaches the maximum voltage on the generator setting. Be aware my charge current from a battery. So this battery denotes is the maximum charge current that it will pull from the generator. So here is, there's two settings on here. So here is my charge amps and also global charge amps. And here is my generator charge amps. This could be an SOC voltage, it could be anything. And that all denotes from, from those settings. So that you need to have those settings. There is a manual that explains it, which we've, we've, we've published. Um, but there is some misunderstanding between using the controller and using the settings on the auxiliary. So I hope this video is useful. I've tried to do a setup, a demonstration. Um, got other demonstrations coming very soon, but um, I'm trying to explain it simply. And you can still see it's called, the generator is being called from at the moment and it's connecting. It is very, very important to follow it this way. And, and a couple of other points is um, we're using E419 and the MCU uh, 3881 for this demonstration. Um, so you see the thing is just functioning, it's chugging away. Um, this, again, um, if something goes wrong on the generator, 
if I got a frequency or if the voltage goes a bit skew with, then the thing will cut out. And at the moment is the frequency, I'm using 49. I can drop the frequency a bit. There you go, 47. Maybe the generator's loading up a bit. Uh, and there you go. The frequency changed too quickly. I moved the frequency too much. That's the problem if you're using it. A, a not so good a generator, just reset it, it's dropped out. If the generator is not so stable and the poor quality generator and the old fashioned generator and the frequency is going up and down, it might be just a simple um, regulator that's on the carburetor or whatever, or the air intake on the generator. Um, and maybe not the regulation is not very good uh, and it's just too small a generator, that's what will happen. If you are using a tiny generator, you can limit the amount of power charging the battery, but you also have to consider the amount of power to the load. So I hope it's useful uh, and keep watching. And, and, and something I never ask, um, we, we, we put this on YouTube, please you know, subscribe to the channel because then we will update you when, when more videos come in. So just click the subscribe button. I always forget to do that because I never think about it. So if you do that, it's great. Thanks for watching. Bye.